Here's a scary question. Releasing in 2003, how old were you when you first played this one? Today's a pretty big day for releases on the Nintendo Switch. I know Knights of the Old Republic might not be everyone's cup of tea, but to its fans who have likely already completed it on multiple systems, the timing couldn't be better with the release of the Switch OLED. This one comes from Aspire, the same team that worked on the recent Star Wars Republic Commando, which let's be honest wasn't the greatest port, and who are also developing the complete remake. I'll make a few brief comparisons to other versions of the game, but predominantly we'll focus on what is actually available on your Switch. We'll look at handheld performance, frame rates when docked, text size, any additions or omissions that have been made for the Nintendo Switch version, as well as any visual and control options. If you're new, welcome to the channel. My name's Mark Walker, and we built this channel to be a bit like those old gaming magazines you had when you were a kid. Is it Star Wars or Star Woes? Well, let's find out. Right off the bat then, let's look at performance. The game is targeting around 60 frames per second. Now I say around 60 frames per second because this varies greatly depending on where you are. When you're in the interior sections, it feels very smooth. This is the same for both docked and handheld. When in combat, you tend to see this drop down. It doesn't drop too far though. Usually it will be around about 40 frames per second, and it's certainly not a stuttery game. The frame pacing is solid, and the image, as you can see on screen, is delivered in a very smooth fashion. Unfortunately though, and I'm not sure if this is more a product of the engine itself, there are certain particle effects that can cause the frame rate to drop below 30. It's a rarity, and I'm convinced it's something that's always been there. We saw something very similar in Kingdoms of Amala, where those same particle effect slowdowns were evident across all platforms. For 95% of your playtime though, it's a smooth experience, although there will be people out there who would have preferred them to have locked it out. I think that actually in this instance, where it generally does stick to 40 to 50 frames per second and has good frame pacing, it feels significantly smoother than 30, but let's be honest, having the option would have been nice. Clearly, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on Nintendo Switch is running at native resolution, and I cannot tell you what a delight it is to finally see this in widescreen HD resolution. But Mark, it's been out on PC, you say? It has been out on PC since 2003, but when I first tried to get this to run on a Windows PC, you had to do all kinds of any modifications just to get it to play. And then when you did, your HD version stretched over widescreen became... Ugh. Yeah, it didn't look good. So having this run natively with proper widescreen support is actually a bit of a win in my book. Combine that with the OLED screen and it's actually not looking like a 2003 game, but maybe like a 2006 one. Which takes us on to the visual quality. Now clearly it's aged, um, well it's old isn't it? And as a result, texture quality looks, um, let's just say the main character's faces look a little bit like a candle that's been burnt down and all that remains of their features is a waxy blur. I mean, compared to the Xbox and iPad versions, it actually looks pretty damn good. And I should imagine for the purpose of porting this across, they didn't really have the option of changing textures, just that of up everything to native. And it certainly looks better than it did when I last played it. Still, it's an old game, it shows its age, but it runs well enough in my opinion and better than their last efforts on Switch. Anti-aliasing is actually very good. This is most likely just due to the up res, but you won't notice many jaggy edges on objects, and the shadow resolution is high enough that they actually look quite crispy. Multiple dynamic lights back to back, and certain scenes like corridors with those high res shadows don't look half bad. Load times are really important, and I timed a few of them, and they never went above 10 seconds. This is really good because you'll often be saving before an important battle, and then potentially reloading when it goes wrong. It would be nice if they have implemented a quick save option though, perhaps a single button press without having to change any of the UI elements. But alas, this is not present. Thankfully, there's an auto save feature, however, this doesn't always trigger between every load screen. It's only when entering key areas. Finally though, there is an issue with the Nintendo Switch version at the moment, and it's an issue that I've never mentioned ever on any Switch release because it's just never happened. And it's something that Alex from Switch Corner and I were having a bit of a chuckle about. And that's that some of the text is a little bit too large. Just check out what happens when you enter combat. 
and this huge text box comes across the top of the screen. You're looking at about 33% of your real estate taken away and it cannot be reduced in size. It's really strange because the iPad version didn't have that, it was much smaller. And the actual text itself isn't really a problem, it's the giant box it sits inside. I'm sure it's something they have to patch out. I don't really understand how it got this far into development, honestly. And it does become an irritation when you're trying to fight and your character's head's cut off by the box. Especially when you factor in that there are no camera zoom controls, so you can't actually change how far out you're looking. And it does feel like a bit of a strange omission that they didn't include some touch screen support. And that's where we get into the graphical options tab. What graphical options have you got here? Well, you can change the brightness and uh, adjust the volume of the music. So there you go. It's a one for one. And let's be honest, we already knew that was going to happen. When it comes to control options then, this is where I have another slight gripe. I know I've said how potentially their hands are tied in terms of how much they can do to the game, but personally I always like to increase the sensitivity on any camera controls, especially in third person adventure titles where you've got to move the camera quite a bit. The default is okay, but to my playstyle it feels very slow. I guess I'm just used to that mouse and keyboard. The sound has seen no changes, the score is as epic as it ever was. And the voice acting is as awesome as it ever was. It really is one of the best stories of any Star Wars game you'll probably ever play. And it gives an incredible amount of lore and backstory. Then we've got the download size. The game is 12,284 megs. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got a little chunk of space there. And it clocks in at around about 30 hours. As far as the price goes, it's 11 pounds 29, which I actually think is bang on. Maybe 9.99 would have been perfect. I know most of you will have played the game multiple times before but for those few people that haven't I'm going to go over my impressions of it. Now obviously a lot has changed in terms of what's expected of an RPG and what's been released since but once upon a time Bioware really were the masters. They knew how to craft an intricate story. They used familiar combat mechanics which were based on real D&D &D systems and that felt fair and sensible and Knights of the Old Republic as well as its sequel are two of the finest examples probably still to this day in the genre. You can create a character male or female and choose one of three classes and then choose their name. It used a really interesting hybrid turn-based system when it launched that meant that when enemies were on screen the action would pause and it allowed you time to make strategic decisions. Now the Switch version uses the same system that the iPad had in that the turn cue shown at the bottom of the screen only allows for one move to be placed in it which is a bit annoying in all honesty. Back on PC you could stack up I believe up to four different turns. Now I don't know if I'm missing something here but I just cannot see it. It only ever seems to stack a single move. That combat allows you to switch between all of the characters and trigger off their moves. There are three different difficulty options if things get a bit too tricky and these can be changed on the fly. Combat's not overly complex and once an action's been chosen your character will automatically move to the target and you can switch targets using the RZ and LZ triggers. Leveling up then grants you different amounts of skill points, some to improve your base statistics and others that you can put into specific traits to improve and change your build. This aspect still holds up nicely and when you finally unlock your Jedi skills, spoiler, that's obviously going to happen, there's the potential for numerous runs concentrating on those three different Jedi classes. Your actions and choices that you make in dialogue will affect whether you move towards the light or dark side and in a very cool move this was shown via your character picture. It's not just the main story that's good with Knights of the Old Republic, it was those side missions as well. Sure some of them were standard fetch quests but there were some memorable greats in here. The arena battles, the pod racing, and the whodunit murder mystery, to name but a few. KOTOR feels a little clunky by modern standards, little quirks like having to wait a few seconds before you can pick up loot off the ground still remain, but so does the incredible story, the excellent combat, and a cast of characters who actually interact with each other and who still to this day don't feel two dimensional. Things that need fixing urgently are that giant text box, but honestly, that's about it. Audio sounds good, it looks great on that wide screen and the low times are on point. As always, do leave any questions down in the comments because undoubtedly I'll have forgotten something and I'll do my best to answer those. What was your favorite? Was it this one or the sequel? And are you looking, silly question, are you looking forward to the remake? Thank you to our patrons. As always, you guys are amazing. You support us each month and it really does help. If you want to join them, all the links will be down in the description. All that's left to say is, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! Thank you.